A girl melts hearts by her devotion to her paralyzed mother, whom she took care of for years after her father abandoned them. Years later, when she is at the peak of success, he unexpectedly appears and hands her an olive branch. Abby had been an aspiring detective since the age of eight. It was a dream nourished by the many episodes of detective series and the series of books that intrigued him. Growing up, she wanted to solve mysteries in the graffiti-strewn alleys of the city where she lived. But the greatest mystery that Abby was never able to solve was that of her father, from whom she was separated, and of his whereabouts. Abby knew little about him except that his first name was Randy. His mother, Vera, refused to reveal anything else to him, but Abby never tired of bombarding her with questions. How did you meet? Was he like that when you first dated? What exactly happened and why did he leave us? She often asked. The more Abby wanted to know about her father, the more Vera hid the truth. It still haunted her when she remembered that day when Randy disappeared without a trace. Years ago, Vera and her husband lived the life of their dreams in their small house on the hillside. Randy worked in a shoe factory, while Vera was a wonderful housewife. They earned enough money to realize their little dreams, including that of having a baby. They had been married for five years, and although their small house had an abundance of everything a middle-class couple can ask for, it lacked only one thing, the high-pitched, shrill cries of a baby. If you love someone from the bottom of your heart, you will never abandon them. Like many women, Vera was diagnosed with problems with conception. The only glimmer of hope she had was when the doctors told her that she still had a small chance of getting pregnant. Randy and Vera were undeterred and kept trying. And one day, their prayers were answered. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Randy cried when Vera told him that she was pregnant. It was as if a dream came true. It was the day for which they were constantly praying, and it finally arrived. The ultrasound that Vera passed a few weeks later revealed that a little girl was growing inside her. Randy's joy was reduced to a slight despair, and he was rather upset. I thought we would have a little boy. Darling, whether it's a boy or a girl, it's our baby. It's a blessing, Vera told him. She loved every day of her pregnancy. Her belly was growing, carrying all the happiness she had dreamed of, and soon it was time to welcome their child into the world. After exhausting labor, the maternity hospital echoed with the loud crying of Vera's newborn baby girl. Abby is here, she sighed. Her joy overshadowed all this pain that she had endured. Vera was so happy that day and thought that even Randy would feel the same way. A few days later, Vera was discharged from the hospital and returned home with her baby. She was happiest when her little girl was kicking and fidgeting in her arms. Vera felt like her life was complete, but one night, two weeks later, she felt her fingers tingling. What's the matter with me? She panicked when she saw Abby crying in her crib. It was time to feed the baby. Vera got up gently from her bed, feeling unnaturally heavy, as if someone was pulling her from behind. Vera got up as best she could, but could go no further. She could no longer walk or feel her legs. Vera let out a scream, startling Randy, who was sleeping soundly next to her. She was then rushed to hospital, and 72 hours later, doctors revealed she was paralyzed. Randy shuddered as he thought of the responsibilities that awaited him. He had to take care of his baby and simultaneously of his wife, who would use a wheelchair all her life. This idea alone frightened him. A few weeks later, Vera returned home. She was broken down because at first she had thought that she would be fine, but all the doctors she randomly consulted over the next few weeks revealed the same thing. It was difficult for Vera, but she accepted the truth and moved on. A few more months passed, and one morning Vera found a note on the side of the bed where Randy was sleeping. He wasn't there, and his wardrobe was empty. All her clothes, her belongings, and even her shoes were gone. She called him, but his number was out of order. Vera's heart throbbed with fear when she took the note and read it. I tried, but I can't do it anymore. I am tired. I don't want to keep pushing your wheelchair all my life. Even I have dreams. 
I wanted a beautiful wife and a baby. I thought I had both, but I can't take care of you the way I take care of our child. I am sorry. Take care of the baby, please. Goodbye. Vera took a long time to accept the painful blow, represented by the fact that Randy had abandoned her and their daughter because of her disability. He was gone in the blink of an eye, leaving her with a mountain of responsibilities on her shoulders. Vera was devastated, and her child's loud crying reminded her that we must keep moving forward. The road ahead seemed difficult, but she decided to keep moving forward for her daughter. She remembered a skill that her late grandmother had taught her and knew that this was how she would raise her child. Vera turned the empty garage outside her house into a sewing workshop and started sewing clothes for the people in the neighborhood. The first few days were very difficult for her. Most of her neighbors preferred chic designer clothes from boutiques to those that she made. But sewing was her first skill. She had dropped out of school and could not easily find a better paying job. In addition, she wanted a job that would allow her to keep an eye on her daughter constantly. As the days passed, Vera experienced a difficult period. She could barely make ends meet with the little she earned, but her self-confidence was increasing day by day. Several years passed and Vera managed to provide for her daughter. Abby, then 15 years old, forgot her passion for the detective profession. Seeing her mother struggling tormented her. She wanted to help her mother take care of everything, and at her insistence, Vera taught Abby to sew. Every day after school, the girl spent long hours practicing sewing with leftover fabric on their old pedal sewing machine. Soon, Abby's assiduity helped her become one of the youngest aspiring seamstresses in the city. She introduced new models that people loved, especially women and teenagers. Vera and Abby began to earn more money and became closer and closer to each other. They still belonged to the middle class, but they had earned enough money to spend special occasions and holidays together. While everything was going well, the years during which Vera had worked hard caught up with her. She developed health problems and could no longer work on the sewing machine as before. She was worried that she would have to close her business but Abby, then 17 years old, convinced her not to do it. Mom, we can do this together. I'll help you. You don't have to worry about anything. She encouraged Vera to turn their business around. This is all that Vera needed when she was in her moment of weakness. She trusted Abby and entrusted her with the sewing workshop. Abby was on summer vacation and was devoting more time to her work. She spent days and nights trying on the new models she had been working on. She changed the entire configuration of their tailor's workshop by transforming it into an attractive boutique. Models dressed in her designer clothes attracted people to discover the latest trends in the store. Abby's unwavering dedication to their business gave good results, and little by little, she began to earn more money and even pay for her mother's treatment. Abandoning your loved ones is not a mistake. It is a sin. Vera eventually recovered, and joined forces with her daughter to keep their business stable. Years later, Abby's dedication to advancing what her mother had started paid off when she opened a new shop in the town square. She was so happy and wished that her father, whom she had never heard of, was there to celebrate her success. On the day of the inauguration, the local media flocked to the shop to interview Vera and her daughter for their article presenting their struggles and their journey to success. Vera then gave a short speech at the inauguration, revealing why her husband had left her, and Abby's heart broke when the truth finally came out. My daughter always asked me who her father was, and I told him very little about him. But today, I think she is old enough to know him completely, Vera began to reveal to the local press. My husband left me with my baby because he thought I would be a burden in the wheelchair. But I want to tell him one thing. Randy, if you're out there hearing this, look, it's my daughter. I raised her alone and gave her the love of a father and a mother. She doesn't need her mother to have legs to raise her. She just needs love, and I will love her until my last breath. I am who I am today thanks to her. My daughter inspired me not to give up. She never left me in my moments of weakness. Everyone's hearts melted at Abby's love for her mother. They were all moved to tears, and Vera and Abby walked into their new shop as the confetti rained down. 
Over time, they launched two more branches and their clothes became the topic of conversation in the city. Several years have passed and Abby, then 23 years old, has stopped thinking about her father. She couldn't find a reason to forgive him for abandoning his family. Then one day, someone knocked on his door. Yes, she replied. She looked the man in the eye, unable to quickly guess that it was Randy, her father from whom she was separated. She looked past his beard and wrinkles, and Randy looked destroyed, worn out by time. Who is it, darling? Vera arrived in the living room in a wheelchair and jumped when she saw her former husband at the door. Honey, how are you? Randy pronounced after a heavy silence. Abby couldn't believe her eyes. She had never seen her father so closely. She had only seen it in her mother's old wedding photos. She had never called him daddy in her whole life and could not bring herself to call him that. Why are you here? She asked him. Randy looked restless as he waited for his wife and daughter to let him in. Stay there, Abby shouted when he took a step forward. Honey, I'm your father. I came here to see you, Randy said. I'm sorry for what I did. Even though I was far away, I still loved you. I know that you are my father who abandoned me and my mother. You abandoned us when we needed you the most, when mom needed you the most, and you never loved us. Why are you here now? Randy didn't have the courage to answer her. How could he do it? How could he tell his daughter that he was holding out an olive branch to the family he had abandoned after learning of their success? Vera and Abby's success story had spread like wildfire inside and outside the city and had finally reached Randy's ears. He met with them, thinking about a potential reconciliation. He wanted to find his wife and daughter. He wanted them to be that happy family again. But you destroyed it with your own hands, didn't you? Abby broke Randy's silence. You left mom thinking that she would be a burden. You only saw her sitting in the wheelchair. You were afraid that you would have to keep pushing her all your life, weren't you? But let me tell you something. My mother pushed me to move forward. She is at the origin of my success. It is thanks to her that we are here today. We are here for each other. We don't want someone else between us. Honey, please. I'm your father. I am not someone else. He pleaded with Abby and Vera as the latter turned around and went on her wheelchair to her room. Honey, I'm your father. Please forgive me. Everyone makes mistakes. But Abby never gave in to Randy's entreaties. Abandoning your loved ones is not a mistake. It's a sin. You didn't need us when our life was miserable. You left us when we needed you. We don't need you now. Abby slammed the door in her crying father's face, regretting that one reckless mistake he had made years ago.